the basic healing class of Athena. It actually brought me memories of when we would play with energy balls. And because I wasn't, sh when, when I first started, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to feel. And then suddenly it felt like it was magnetic. Like when we would play with energy balls, it was very similar. Like there was like a, like a push and a pull and it was hot. It was amazing that we could feel, like all of a sudden, when she would ask us to feel for problem areas with, with people, some of them they don't even know, and then we would feel it, and then it would later on get confirmed. I remember a specific incident that after my brother taught it to me, so I would play with it a lot, because it, it was a new feeling. So I went to school the next day, and then I told my best friend, I said, like, here, shake your hands, and then, and then start moving it back and forth and then tell me what you feel but apparently this best friend of mine she's also gifted so she can also see and she can also feel she's like hey i feel it i feel that magnetic pull it's like the shore classmates so i showed her other classmates and they're like what 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 are you talking about they're like what what do you feel it's like it's like a magnet it goes it, it it's like it's pulling and pushing and they're like what i don't feel anything it's like it feels like marshmallows they're like no i really can't feel anything so as, apparently we were the only ones who could feel it i started feeling energy again after my 18th birthday so i was in college at that time and then i started seeing things around campus so i got a little bit scared and then tita tina asked me to go to the healing class also and then she said hey you know what you have a gift you can heal so i said okay that's kind of weird but then i didn't mind it that weekend two other people one i knew one i didn't know approached me and said that hey you know what you have a gift you can heal everything we knew as kids started making sense our brother he used to teach us how to feel energy like we shared a room so our beds were side by side how old were we i was probably like 12 or 11 so 11 maybe. i would have been about six yeah six around that age and then our beds were side by side and we'd hide like you know it's a castle and then we'd throw energy at each other and see who gets dizzy first <laughs> we didn't realize that what we were playing with was energy we thought that okay he's like okay just feel do you feel like a magnetic thing in between your palms and he's like yeah yeah we can so we thought we had superpowers we tried to make different colors and you know we, we didn't realize that each color had a different feeling there is this priest in Ateneo. He's very, he's very gifted. He was the head of the psychology department, and he was also the one who started the spirit questers, right? I think in so. the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he would give a class. I think it's just it was just an elective, and then so my brother took that class with him. So he would teach them. I think there's also astral travel, mm -hmm. and uh, and among other things. Because when I got to college, I took psychology and I wanted to take his class. But then for some reason, his class was always full. So I never got in, but I had a friend who got in his class. So I, I was waiting for her to come out. And then when her class ended, he comes out and he looks at me and says, why aren't you in my class? You should be in my class. So I said, Father, your class was always full. I could never get in. And he kept saying, you should have been in my class. Then he looks at me and he says, say hi to your friends. Because I have a lot of spirit guides. And he goes, say hi to your friends. And I said, oh my gosh. One of them came from her. And then apparently I needed, <laughs> I needed one to help me with my healing. So since she had many, one transferred to me. And then a few months later on, apparently I, I had like another set of 
five. There were five of them that started following me around. And they all had different purposes. They were helping me with different parts of healing, apparently. So when I heal, it usually depends on the client, what they need. So most of the time, they come to me for emotional issues. And then usually it has a past life root. And if not, there are spirit attachments or could be curses also. So I specialize in, I guess, defense against the dark art. So that's, that's when I started seeing colors and I started to feel energies better. And then I was able to discern if, if what I was feeling, it was really, it was really correct. And if it was really good energy from bad energy, because before, if it was bad energy that it would hurt if it's good energy then it will feel good but later on when i started feeling more sometimes even bad energy would feel overwhelming and good energy would also feel overwhelming so it would be difficult to discern uh, and then i learned this new healing modality where it actually helped me to see better and feel better and so i learned I learned to discern better good from bad energy as well as see colors and then talk to angels. Actually, I I really enjoyed both talking to angels because then because I I've, I've always been into angels. I did a research paper when I was in high school and it was about angels. And at that time, I didn't understand it so much. Like I would get information from books and then the little that I could from the internet during my time. <laughs> I, I got also. But then when I reread that research paper recently, it made a lot of sense. Yeah, that, that's what I enjoy doing now. And that, that's how I like helping people. Mine was a little bit different because since I was a kid, I could see. So I'd see our, our dead grandfather and, and I'd, you know, freak out the help at home <laughs> because I'd be like, oh, he's there on my bed. And then we learned those energy balls. And then I went to school and I started showing my classmates or I'd see, you know, people walking around school. And then they'd be like, you're really strange. So when I realized that and I talked to her about it, I said, you know what? I figured it's something that I should just keep at home. It's like a family secret instead of sharing it with your classmates. So I kept quiet about it in school ever since. And then slowly, it, I stopped seeing. That was about, no, the last time I remember seeing, I was about eight. And then nothing for 10 years. If I had my birthday September, around November, I started seeing again. I don't know why, but it just happened. I saw my guardian angel last, that he was the last one I saw, which was finally enough right after my first confession. <laughs> While I was doing my penance. <laughs> yeah. You know how you go to confession and then, you know, they teach you all these things. I was in grade two. And then you pray, do your penance. And then you they give you this piece of paper. And then mine said, uh, honesty, which is like the value I'm supposed to value the most. And then there's a corresponding saint or angel. And mine said, Saint Michael. I said, okay, you know, kneel in church, do your penance. And then he was there. And I was like, wow. I mean, you're like eight years old. And then you see this, you know, angel. And then, and then I said, are you my guardian angel? And then he said, yes. So I was like, wow. That he was the last one I ever saw before I stopped seeing. I started seeing again. And I remembered that incident. I started talking to him again. So sometimes when I'm driving alone, I'm not really alone because <laughs> I'm actually talking to someone, <laughs> which is kind of cool. I flew to Europe for a month. Okay, and then we, we started doing like a pilgrimage. So I pray for different people. And then our last stop was Rome in the Vatican. And then when we were there, um, Pope John Paul II just got canonized as a saint. So I said, wow, you know, this is like a chance. <laughs> and then they had a, a separate area in the Vatican where, you know, his body was there and it's cordoned off. 
So I entered, and then you, you can do your usual prayers there. And then because I was praying, I could feel the weight of all the people's prayers. And I said, oh my gosh, the Vatican is so dirty and heavy because, you know, I guess people can't help it when they have problems. They dump it in church and you feel it. So I said, oh gosh, I'll, do, I'll just do community service. I'll download unconditional love to the whole Vatican. So I just did. I closed my eyes and did the whole thing. And I was like, oh, it's clean and, you know, help the prayers go up. I mean, why not? It's like a manifestation anyway. So started going up. When I opened my eyes, the whole Vatican looked like it had gold fairy dust. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's fairy dust in the Vatican. And then I saw the, the spirit of St. John Paul. He was standing in front of me because I was right in front. And then he, he did this to my head. And then he, he kissed my head. And then he said, I, I'll give you a gift, which is love. That following Wednesday, we were going to have an audience with um, Pope Francis. And then when we were sitting down, we were waiting for him to come out. I saw one of the windows, like really high. It looked like it was frosted. And there was just a heart. And then when I got home, and then I told all the healers in the healing house, um, one of them said, hey, you know, if you saw the golden fairy dust, that's what um, divine energy looks like. We were about to go to sleep and then we just, we had just finished taking a bath and everything. And then she, our nanny was still cleaning up and she says, look, it's Lolo. Look, it's Lolo in the door. I'm like, where, where? So I couldn't see then. Um, I, I actually used to see my uncle, my dead uncle, when I was younger. But then I stopped seeing. But so in her case, when she 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 said that, she's like, it's Lolo. I'm like, where? There by the door. And my bed is the one closer to the door. I'm like, what? I don't see him. And I said, no, he's here. He's coming here. He's going to sit beside me. Because our uncle was, was shot. I think I was around two years old, or no, maybe younger. And then we would be in my grandfather's house, and I would say, Hi, Tito Eddie, come sit beside me. And then so they would be like, what? <laughs> and I guess it was a new experience to them. That was the first time a, a kid, like a, one of the grandchildren, would s say something like that. So I'd be carrying her that way, and her head would be here. But instead of facing opposite direction, and she would stare at the corner of the room, and then she would smile and she would coo. So I, once I knew that she was talking to my mom, and another time I knew also that she was talking to our nanny. During the Christmas season, we had we had a family get together with my mom, with my husband's side of the family, and after all of all of his brothers and sisters left, and all of her cousins. She, sta she was staring at the one side of the room and same thing, she was smiling and she was cooing and so I knew that she was talking to my husband's mom. She would wake up like every two to three hours and there was, there was a time when she would wake up at like 3 a.m. for a feeding and then she doesn't want to go back to sleep so it had been two hours already and she still doesn't want to sleep, she's wide awake. So I think you were jet lagging. <laughs> So I, I asked her, I said, like, hey, can you please talk to Cecilia? I'm really sleepy. I just want to sleep. Tell her to go back to sleep. So she talks to her psychic <laughs> psychically. And then all of a sudden, she just starts falling asleep. Then I said, I told her, please tell her to just sleep every night. And then all of a sudden, she would just fall asleep at the same time every night. Recently, I was taking her for a walk around her village and then her nanny was saying, look, she's talking to the leaves. And I said, are you sure she's just talking to the leaves? So she, I know that she really likes, she likes it when, well, sometimes the leaves would move and then she would talk, she would, she looks like she's talking to it. So once I just decided to check and I saw fairies. A few years into healing, I, I would always say, I want a fairy, I want a fairy. And then one time, one of our healing aunts, <laughs> she said, wait, what's that on your shoulder? And then she picked it up and she said, oh, you have a fairy. I'm like, really, really? What, what, what color is she? And she's like, she's, she has blonde hair and she's wearing green. And so I would talk to her. And then for some reason, I'm just so attuned to fairies. 
whole time I was pregnant, I stopped seeing and feeling. And then I, I figured maybe because I had to stop healing also because they were afraid that maybe whatever I would absorb from the healings, she might absorb also and she would feel it. And then, so I, I stopped healing when I was pregnant. But when I gave birth, one night, I was, well, I was breastfeeding her again. And then I saw something playing at the corner of her room and it was white. So I said, like, hey, what's that? So I, I asked her, I said, can you check what it is? And she's like, oh, you have a white bar in your room. I'm like, oh, so it is white. And I said, it, it's playing at the corner. She's like, yeah, it's just playing at the corner. I'm like, who does it belong to her? Why is it there? And she said, I think it's a guard of Cecilia. So even at this young age, she has a guard already.